uh, and, and tonight I don't feel good about myself that I let Anderson Silva fight this last fight. Um, you know, we've treated Anderson Silva with nothing but respect, and if you guys knew what Anderson Silva gets paid to fight, you'd shit your fucking pants. Um, so I think that uh, we've treated him like family. I shouldn't have let him fight this fight tonight. I did something that I, that I disagreed with, and, and I knew I was right, and tonight proved I was right, and Anderson Silva should never fight again. And, and finally, just, you know, can you talk about his significance? You talk, you called him a legend several times, but what made him so great when he was in his prime? And, and why do you think he was so good in the UFC where, you know, he was on that upward trajectory, but he seemed like when he got to the UFC is when he finally just hit the big time? Yeah, he, he, uh, he could do things to people that other people couldn't. Um, he was almost impossible to touch. He would, ju he would be just on the end of your punch where it would, the, the leather might just touch you a little bit and he'd come back with a combination that would either knock you out or almost knock you out. I mean, he used to do some fun stuff. What he did to Vitor Belfort when he fought Vitor, um, what he did to Rich Franklin. You know, Chris Lieben at the time was undefeated and had an iron chin. He came in and made Chris, you know, Chris Lieben look like he had no chin. What he did to Forrest Griffin when he went up to 205. The list just goes on and on of incredible things that, that he, he had, a, he had, a, he had a, a messed up rib. The Chael Sonnen fight goes the whole way and then he, he, he submits him, you know, with a couple minutes left in the fifth round. Just legendary fights that Anderson Silva's had here, you know, when he was in his prime. And, uh, yeah, so. I just want to ask one question on just a slightly different topic. I had a number of British fans ask me this. Uh, they were saying because the country is going to be locked down again, I guess, on Monday, um, that will that affect Leon Edwards, do you know, and, and will he be able to fight? You know, he hasn't fought for a while, so what impact will that have on Leon? Yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. I, I, you know what's funny? Uh, um, Damian Hurst texted me tonight. You know that him and his his girl were watching the fights, and uh, he told me we're about to go on lockdown again tonight. I didn't even know that, so that was the first I heard of it tonight. And that's a good question, and I'll look into that after uh, the scrum. Israel Adesanya was uh, in attendance today, yeah. and he was tweeting out Champ Squared. Uh, Champs what? Champ Squared, like Champ Two. Uh, is he fighting Jan Blakovic next? Yeah, he is. Yeah, I wanted. Listen, when the fight was over. Um, on Fight Island, the last fight, I was like, I'm going to have to sit down with this kid and convince him on why he needs to fight Whitaker. <clears throat> and uh, Whitaker comes out and says he doesn't want to fight him. Craziest shit I've ever seen. So, yeah, there's no arguing with Israel now. I thought Whitaker deserved the shot, and uh, Whitaker doesn't want it, so yeah, we'll let him do it. So, do you know, if he, that would presumably be in like February or March when we go, potentially go back to Abu Dhabi, that fight? I don't know. Uh, I don't know where we'll be. But you know if he wins the 205-pound title, everyone's... Listen, man, after... How many days we got left? Four days, five days, whatever? After all this wacky shit's over, we'll find out what happens. Uh, you know, I think that when the election's over, yeah. a lot of shit's going to change. But uh, if he wins the 205-pound title, then everyone's going to want him to fight John Jones at, like, heavyweight. If he wins the 205-pound? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Conor McGregor tweeted out, lightweight division incoming, one pound, uh, 155 pounds. Any further news on that fight? Yeah, it's fight's done. It's yeah. signed? I think so, yeah. As far as I know, it's done. Um, I remember once upon a time, George St. Pierre's fighting, Anderson Silva's in the crowd, and it seemed like that was the super fight that was just aligning. How close was that ever in UFC history? Never. GSP didn't want that fight. Do you know why? We, we had these deals where at that time, Anderson Silva was in a very unique position. He could have gone down and fought George St. Pierre. They could have caught, you know, come up with a catch weight, or he could have moved up and a catch weight and did John Jones. Silva didn't want to move up and fight Jones, and GSP didn't want to move up and fight Silva. So none of those fights ever happened. Um, to talk about Anderson Silva, you know, the GOAT conversation. I know you've been getting a lot of it, Habib and GSP. Just where would you put Anderson all time if He's there is the a... Yeah, he's one, of the greatest. he's one of the greatest of all time. I mean, I don't know if I could come up with a number, but, um, you know, the more of the sport, as the sport continues to grow and get bigger and bigger and better, you know, there's, you're going to see a lot of great talent coming through the next, uh, you know, five or six years. So, um, but Anderson Silva is one of the all-time greats. 
a lot of uh, kids that would have played other sports became mixed martial artists be from watching Anderson Silva. And, um, you know, he, he had a massive impact on this company in Brazil and other parts of the world. Uh, earlier this week, it came out that you spoke with Habib Nurmagomedov. You said, you know, it sounds like, you know, he will go for number 30. I was just wondering if you could elaborate on just, you know, how the conversation went and the impression you got about his future. Well, you know, he, he didn't say that he'll fight at, you know, whatever, but he didn't say no. He's, he's, he's considering the 30, you know, his father wanted it. And I think that he was, uh, you know, super emotional had the mumps, measles, or whatever, broken toe, trained on a stationary bike for that fight, and then came in and fought. And I think that, you know, he was super emotional. So it's, he's still the champ. There's no vacant title open right now or no interim title happening. Um, he's the champ, and, and, you know, we'll give him some time to figure out what he wants to do. Khabib seemed pretty uh, sure that he was going to retire. What kind of feeling do you have that he is and that... You, you feel pretty good about it? Yeah, that? I feel pretty good. He said he was going to talk with his mother. Okay. And then uh, you guys announced that he was the number one pound for pound. And uh, we didn't announce oh, that. Oh, I thought you guys did announce that. No, the media that. does. Oh, you, okay. Yeah, the media, you guys okay. do that. Okay. I don't know if it's you, but you guys, <laughs> you guys, the media, um, voted him. The, he is the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. I mean, just that performance with Gaethje uh, on top of, you know, being undefeated and only maybe losing two rounds in his entire career. Yeah, I, I would say he's the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Uh, John Jones kind of had uh, some thoughts on uh, on Instagram, Twitter about that. Uh, he made some good points about the number of defenses he had made. Yeah. Any any oh, thoughts on Jones? I've been I've been telling you guys, John Jones is the goat forever. Um, he's not the pound for pound best fighter in the world right now, though. But yeah. Any more uh, conversations with him, and we'll we'll see him next. Um, no, not that I'm aware of that. No.